Hey guys, it's Kevin again. This is my review for Teen Wolf Season 4, Episode 1, The Dark Moon. And I was really looking forward to this episode. I mean, I was hyping up this um, season premiere. I was really hyping it up because of the last season, which arguably was the best season of the show. I mean, that was an awesome season. You know, they killed off Allison. They had a kick-ass finale, like a kick-ass finale. Very dark storyline, and I was really looking forward to this show. And I, I'll say that while I read a lot of shows for you guys, Team Wolf is definitely one of my favorites. And it was—it's probably my favorite summer show that I watch. It—I always love it. Every season proves to be better and better than better and better and better than the last one. And I was just really, really hyping up um, this premiere. I was really looking forward to it. And, um, I loved it, as usual. I, I loved it. I love where the season's going. I especially love the twist at the end. But what I like about this season, it's kind of, um, the message I've heard most people say is that you can't go back. Because, you know, Allison, Isaac, they're gone. Isaac has left town. Allison's dead. Um, but, and now you have Malia and Kira. They're now part of the pack. And, basically, uh, that's what this episode focuses on. So basically, most of this, the whole episode takes place in Mexico. We don't know why they're there or whatever, but all we see first is Styles and Lydia, and they're wandering. She says his plan is the worst ever and says they're going to die. And he asked, um, he asked if that's her option as a Banshee, and if that's her opinion as a Banshee. And she says to stick with um, to Banshee predictions. And you know what? I really do like Styles and Lydia, and I really do hope they get together. Right now, no, because Styles likes Malia right now, so let him like her. Um, at least he likes a girl. And plus, that was a girl that he lost his virginity to, so obviously he's gonna like her. Um, and basically, he says to stick with Ban to Banshee predictions. And later, they walk through a market street and they come to a door. And Lydia speaks Spanish to them, and, st and I was like, Lydia can speak Spanish, okay. <laughs> And, uh, Silas holds up the skull key, holds up the security camera, and they are admitted. The door locks behind them, and they are, and they look very afraid. They creep down the hall, and the lamps on the walls rattle and shake as they come to another door. Push their way in, see a, um, rollicking dance club, and the crowd looks wild, and the music is blaring, and as we know in the show, when there's a, some sort of party, it's when the show's crazy. And a man looks down on them and speaks into a walkie-talkie. They weave their way through the dancers to the bar and are given shots. The guy comes up and tells them the drinks are on the house. Lydia says they didn't come to drink. He drops the skull emblazoned and gold uh, gold objects into her glass. And Lydia tells um, this girl, um, Araya, who is actually played by... Um, or Aria, Araya, however you pronounce it. She's played by, um, the, the girl who plays the grandmother on Swish of Birth. She's now on this show. And she says they've come for Derek. Um, that, and that's why they're there in Mexico. We find out right away. They've come for Derek and they're willing to buy him. And Styles lays out 50k and asks where, and she asks where a teenager gets this money from. And they ask if it's Japanese mafia. And she says it wasn't smart for them to come alone. And Styles asks why she thinks they came alone. And right away it's really intense. And we then see Kira, um, of course, we see Kira, the Kitsune, and, um, the Kitsune, and Malia, and, and Malia, the were-coyote, because as we know, Kira's a Kitsune, and Malia's a were-coyote, and you can see that they're actually becoming very good friends, um, I, I like that because it kind of reminds me of, um, Allison and Lydia's friendship, and basically, the woman says she can't believe they brought wolves into their home, and Styles says they brought an alpha, and we see Scott, eyes, and they brought an alpha, and we see Scott, his eyes are flashing red, and that was a great way to start, because then we had the intro and everything, but then security works its way through the crowd looking for the wolves, and Malia and Kira are dancing, and Kira says something is up, Malia tells her to blend in and tells her to dance with her and calls her a dumbass, they dance in security, speaking to the walkie-talkie and moves, as I said, I like that they are becoming good friends, um, Malia pulls Kira in, dance sexually, and Kira smiles at the, at, um, at the touch and attention, and they dance close, um, touching often. Some guys take notice, Malia keeps a casual eye on security, and basically they're just trying to distract people. Um, the woman asks Lydia and Styles if they know what the dark moon is, and Lydia says it's a time of grief, and the woman says it's also a time of loss. And that's basically what this episode focuses on, is the idea of loss, um, and we'll talk about that, but... 
Arya asks why they are risking loss for someone like Derek, Hal, like Derek Hal. And security tells her that the front door is clear, but one security guy is down. And Scott has his radio and tells Stylus to pull off 10K off the table. Now, of course, as I said with Derek, we they don't know where he is. However, I was pretty sure where he was. Because if you remember at the end of the Season 3 finale, Derek met up with Kate Argent. So I was pretty sure that she was the one um, that took him. Um, they don't exactly tell us where he is, though, until a little, a little later, which I'll get to. Um, but pretty much Lydia tells her to take the deal, and she says she's inclined to listen to the Banshee, but decline, but she ends up declining, and basically, uh, several, um, several security workers, um, several security work their way closer to Malia and Kira, and she asks Kira if she's ready, and she nods yes. Malia then flips the guy, Kira pulls her bad, um, uh, Kira then pulls, um, nunchucks, and both of them are just complete badasses in this scene, um, and Scott takes another, and the wolves are on the move, and they head back to an area, and let me just say, Malia and Kira placing Allison is perfect, because if you thought Allison was badass, Malia and Kira are even more badass than Allison was. And Stylus says that Derek is a downer, and she doesn't really want him. He tells her to take the money. Ar Arya grabs a walkie-talkie and says to show them how the Cavaliers negotiate. We see the DJ shoot out some fog-looking stuff onto the crowd from a dispenser, and Scott and the girls creep down the hall and see gas coming out from under a door. He tells the girls to pull back, but then tells them to run because it's Wolf's Bang, um, which obviously Wolf's Bang is not good because it can kill a wolf. And he tells them to look out. Security descends on them, and, and um, Arya says he should be more careful when taking on a hunter with 40 years' experience. She says he's a long way from home. He then looks there and says, "You don't know where he is either." He hits with a he um, he's hit with a ton of volts from a high-powered taser and arcs back in pain. And then we see a flashback, and this is very big because you know the episode just started randomly. We don't you know it started like two. I think they said like two months later. And basically, we see a flashback of Scott and Styles, and they're kind of talking about where they think Derek might be. And he shows Styles the bullets that belong to some Mexican hunters called the Cavaliers. Um, um, and they wonder why they would want Derek. And Scott asks Lydia to do her stuff. She looks at the bullets, plunges her hands into the container, holds them in her hand, closes her eye, drops them to the floor, and she hears a man screaming. And Styles asks if he's dead, and Lydia says no, but she's not sure he's alive either. And Styles asks what that means, and she says she doesn't know. She says there's something not right, but she doesn't know. Styles asks how they find the uh, Cavaliers, and Scott says Mexico. So that's why they're in Mexico, because they have to find who could have taken Derek. You know, they think these, these people called the Cavaliers took Derek. So then we go back to the present, and Scott wakes up, and Styles asks if he's okay. They've, they're have they locked up in a bathroom, and Scott says they don't have Derek, obviously, which, um... They don't have Derek, and they were wrong for once. You know, for for a while, they're they're sometimes right, but at this point, they were wrong. So Kira says she knows. Then she knows. Then tells him that they've actually taken Lydia, and Arya tells Lydia that she doesn't have a lot of experience with banshees. And Lydia says that makes two of us. She says it's strange being out one. They're eating in an outdoor cafe, and the woman tells Lydia that she's underestimating her abilities. And we kind of find out what she actually wants. So Arya asks which of these men is about, are about to die, and Lydia looks around them. The others try to escape their prison because, you know, they're all being captured, and they all been cap they've all been captured, and Kira says they are, are already looked for a way out. Um, Malia says they should take out the first person to open the door, and says they can just leave Lydia. Stylo says they can't, and she asks why. He says they never leave anyone behind. And Malia then says, as a coyote, if hunting is bad, you eat when you have to and move on. And Styles says it's actually progress, because Scott says they're still alive, because Arya wants something from them. And Kira wonders who has Derek, or if he left on his own, who has Derek, or if he just left on his own. As we know, Derek is searching for um, his sister Cora, so that could actually be a very um, astute observation, because the thing is, it's, it's a very big observation, because of course... Derek is looking for Cora. He could have just left on his own, and nothing bad happened to him. However, I was pretty sure that Kate Argent took him, because at the end of the episode, he met up with Kate Argent, and then the episode ended. So, Arya asks Lydia if she needs to touch them, or if it's just a feeling, and Lydia says she doesn't know. Arya asks how close to death they have been, and Arya taps a knife, and the men turn, throws a knife into one of them. Lydia screams and screams, why? Why did you do that? 
and, Ar and Arya says he stole from her, and Lydia asks what she wants. Arya says she wants to know about Scott and what kind of alpha he really is, and that is just huge. That's when we get to our essential plot of what she really wants to do. Um, so that was really big right there, and I'm just like, this episode's awesome already. And we were only like 15 minutes into it, but keep in mind... What I love about Team Wolf, by the way, that I always love is that they make you feel like the episode's almost over when you're only, like, 20 minutes in, and then they introduce something completely different, which is really awesome. So Scott's chained to a chair, and he tells Arya to let the others go. And the guy says that Kira is going to turn the dial to amp up some electricity on Scott if he doesn't answer, any, if he doesn't answer questions the way Arya wants. So, Scott tells Kira to do what they say and says he can take it. Arya says they want to find Derek and ask who took him. Scott asks how he would know that. And Lydia says they don't know and that's why they came here. So, Arya tells Kira to shock Scott. Arya threatens Lydia and Scott tells her to do it. Arya says to start at one. She does and as Scott, and Scott struggles in pain. And um, then we get a, a, you know, so... They're in pain right now, and I'm sure Kira doesn't really want to do this because, you know, Kira and Scott do like each other, and they're really close to getting together. But, of course, Kira had to do this, so then we get a very interesting scene. As we know, Styles and Malia, they like each other. They haven't really brought it up yet, though, in this episode. We know that Styles likes Malia. We know that Lydia now likes Styles and is ready to move on to him. However, Styles now likes Malia. So Styles asks Malia if she can hear any of them, and she says she can't concentrate, and Styles tries to keep her calm. He says to do what she needs to do. She kisses him, and her eyes blaze blue. So I kind of like this new relationship because it kind of shows, like, Styles is moving on from Lydia, which can happen to people. And I kind of like this twist because all this time it's been Styles pursuing Lydia, and now that Lydia has nobody, it's now Styles and Malia, which I like because... It's different from what we've come to love. And as I said, the season's all about you can't go back. And Arya is interrogating Scott, and he's sweating in pain. And basically, we go back to that. And he says he doesn't know who took him. Scott is panting and says it's okay. And he tells Kira it's fine, and she does it. And she cranks the voltage up. Arya screams out who had the power of a shapeshifter. And she asks who could have turned without a bite, without him knowing. And Arya tells Kira to push it to ten. And the lights flicker in the room where Styles and Malia are, are in, and she says they're killing him. Scott snaps into alpha mode, and that was really awesome. We actually saw a flashback between, um, in season one. He recalls a conversation over her between Kate and Chris, Arjun, busts loose out of his change. Arya screams him to say the name. He looks up and says, Kate Arjun. He then realizes what she wants, and Styles says that can't be what he said when Malia tells him, and he says she's a hunter and an Argent. Um... So, we finally see Kate, and then Derek, she leads the gang out into the light, and it's really, really awesome here, because Scott asks Arya if she's just going to let them all go, and she tells Scott she has sent four men after Kate, and none have come back alive. She says she wants to see if he can do any better, and Scott says she could have just told him that Kate was alive, and she says he would not have believed her, and now she knows what kind of alpha he is and where his next step lies. And she says, when he takes the life of an innocent and makes a wolf, she will come knocking at his door. And Scott says that Arya is giving them a guide to help them find Kate and Derek. And we find Brayden. Of course, she's a mercenary. And she says, they have to do La Igalisa, whatever that is. And Lydia asks if it's a church, but Brayden says, you won't find God there. She speeds on her motorcycle, and the others follow in a jeep. And, um, really intense, really crazy shit's going down right now. It's really, really awesome, just really intense. I really loved the second half. I mean, that was the first 20 minutes of the episode, and it's already awesome. So Malia then goes up to Scott, and she's like, you know what, I'm gonna ask, who's Kate? And then Kira says she wants to know, too. And, because, you know, Malia and Kira, they don't know who Kate is. And I like that we kind of are flashing back to season one now, because... Styles says since he since he was at her funeral, he'd like to know too. And Lydia says she was Allison's aunt and a total sociopath. And he says she was never in the coffin. And Scott says Kate killed most of Derek's family in the fire. And he says some survived, like, of course, Cora and Peter, because they're alive. And he says Peter bit and turned him and then killed Kate. And um, Styles says we saw her buried, um, but Scott says they just saw a casket. Of course, all this time, we thought Kate Argent is dead because she died in season one. However, um, he says the Cavaliers heard Kate was killed by an Alpha's Claws and wanted to make sure she was dead. And we saw Arya checking Kate's corpse and see that she has wolf, um, wolf claws. And Scott says, 
Kate's body was healing cl the closer it got to the full moon. And he says the Cavaliers took her because a hunter is supposed to take her own life before they change. And then we see Kate chained up in the same room they were kept in, and a knife was kicked to her. She looks at the blade, and Malia says she wouldn't do it either. And Scott says Kate killed six people getting out. We see Derek come into the room where Kate is lying on the floor, playing dead, and she opens her eyes. And Scott says he doesn't know if Kate is a werewolf and says that he's heard that you take the shape of what you are. And Lydia asks, what's the shape of a psychopath of, of a sociopathic bitch? And their jeep is jolted, and Brayden pulls it to a stop. They get out and say it looks like they hit something. She says they have to get there by night or it'll be dangerous. Styles tells Scott to go with Brayden, and Kira tells him to be careful, and then Babbles a little hugs him. And Brayden says they're losing light, and Scott tells Kira he has to go. And he hops on the bike with a mercenary, and they're off. Kira watches him go with Lawning. As you can see, they they still have a lot of chemistry. Like, seriously, they're so close to getting together. I really wanted them together last season, but I kind of like that they're dragging out because it just makes it, like, more, um, like, hyping it up. It's more, it's more fun that way. Um, so Malia checks under Jeep and says some, and basically, um, something hit them. And it's a huge tooth or knife or about six, um, six inches long. So Brayden drives him at top speed, she pulls the bike over, and Scott sees a church in the distance, and she says, that is La Igalisa, that's where they had to find it. And she, sa and she says, an earthquake lev leveled the town, but left the church standing, and it was built on the ruins of an Aztec temple that was devoted to were jaguars. Yes, now we have a new mythology on this show, a new type of species, were jaguars. Um, because they're pretty sure that Kate Argent is one of these were jaguars. And she says she's never gone this far before and doesn't know if Kate and Derek are there. And Styles works on his Jeep, and as Lydia says they should just walk, the sun is going down, and Malia tells them to work faster, and says there's something out there for them. Scott and Brayden drive on, then uh, drive on, then ditch the bike and pay her flashlights and shotguns. He asks her what she will do with Kate, and she says she was paid to bring her back to the Cavaliers, and she asks why he cares, and says Kate is a mass murderer, and he asks if she would kill Kate, and she says if the money was good enough, she'd kill him. They head into the church, she asks if she, if, um, she can catch Derek Sen. We hear roaring in the distance, and Scott says there's something not human in there with them. Then they head in, and Kira pulls her sword, and she and Malia stand at the ready while Lydia and Styles um, work on the Jeep. It's really intense here. It really is intense here, pretty much. Um, and, um, yeah, so Styles works on his Jeep, and, and basically Malia says she can't see, and Kira pulls her sword into the light of the Jeep. And uses her powers to focus on it. Where was it? Okay. Uses her powers to focus on it. Um, and she, he... Then what happens? What, what happens next? Okay. Uh, she sees something and Malia pops out her teeth, growls and goes in the attack. Lydia tells Styles to focus on the Jeep, but he's worried. And Kira goes after her. She calls out to Malia, brandishes her sword. She hears footsteps, almost cuts off Malia's head. That's how big this is. She almost cuts off Malia's head. And Malia says it's big and fast and cuts deep. We see that Malia has a gash on her body and then she collapses. And then we get a very big scene. Brayden asks Scott why he didn't kiss his girlfriend. He says she's not really his girlfriend. She thinks Kira is his girlfriend. And she says if he dies down there, will he regret not kissing her? And she says he should have. They creep forward through the ruins. One of the skeletons of the hall is coming to life. And Brayden asks what. And Scott says he had a feeling something was behind them. And they press on. Pretty much what this is trying to show is that Scott's not over Allison. Even though he wants to be, he can't get over Allison because of her last words to him. That's really what this is trying to show. So the skeletal cr creature hisses and growls and then runs for them. Brayden tells Scott um, to get ready. Um, to get ready, and then fires when it gets closer. They've got the Jeep working, and Styles tells Malia to never do that again. He says he thought she was leaving, and she says she would never leave without him. Um, and she said... And she said she'd leave the others, and Styles tells them his progress. Lydia says the wound looks bad, and she says it's healing. She says the creature is a strong scent like death. Brayden is firing, but they can't see anything. Scott says it's coming back. It's come back, but tells Scott to get her, um, betting her. Um, the thing comes her comes running. Scott roars an epic alpha roar, and the creature collapses into dust and bones. And then we get to the very end of the episode, which I love this twist at the end of the episode. He says he thinks he scared it. He says he scared everything. Some of the wall collapses. They go into a room, see this sign of a jaguar, and she says she thinks they found Derek, and this is huge, because she touches the seal, 
tells her to stand back, punches it, shatters, they tear the rocks away, and they don't know, we don't know what they see, but Scott says, oh my god, the, the jeep then speeds on as Brayden and Scott struggle out with Derek, the jeep pulls out, and Styles and the others run over, and Malia asks if that's Derek, Styles says, sort of, and then we find out that somehow Kate has turned Derek back to his younger self. So somehow he's reverted back to his teenage self. And wow, is that a great twist. I love this premiere. I thought it was an awesome premiere. I absolutely loved it. So, so awesome. And you know what I really like about this premiere? I love the nostalgic Team Wolf feel of this premiere. You know, you had the classic Lydia Scott Styles Derek stuff, but now you have new stuff with Malia and Kira. By the way, there's no mention of Isaac. I'm pretty sure they just want us to think that Isaac left town, because if you remember at the end of the finale, Isaac was like, I don't know what I'm going to do now that Allison's gone, so... I think it's fine. They didn't mention Isaac because he's obviously not a part of their life anymore and he's been gone for some time, we pretty much think. But what I really like about this uh, season is that it's not going to be as dark as last season. However, they've really increased the action this season. There is a ton more action this season. There's no doubt there's more action this season than there's ever been on the show. There's going to be a lot more action sequences. This premiere was basically full of action sequences, and that was awesome. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot more action sequences. There's going to be a lot more intense scenes, a lot more um, fights, just really awesome stuff coming up on Team Wolf. And it looks like we're also going to meet a new guy. Um... Looks like we're going to be a new guy, pretty much. Um, you know, we're going we're gonna to meet a, uh, a new guy, and he's also going to basically replace Isaac. I don't kind of, I don't really like that they're doing this. The first, you got Jackson, then Isaac, then a new guy. I'm pretty sure, his name's Sean. I'm pretty sure we're going to um, grow to love this guy, just like we did Jackson and Isaac, because Isaac was a character who at first I didn't like, but now I really, but then I really liked his character. I really loved his character, and I think this guy, I'm also going to love his character. Even though he's probably going to be a douchebag, I heard he's going to be more like Jackson. I'm still looking forward to this character and seeing what he does. Also, how is Derek going to get back to his original self, and why did Kate really do this? What does she really want from Derek? It looks like in the promo that she did this because she wants Derek to feel like, um, you know, he can trust her when he really can't, as we know. Um, the other big thing, of course, is what's going to happen with Styles and Malia? Do you think they're actually going to get together? I think they will. Um, as we know, um, they really have a lot of chemistry, and I'm thinking they are going to get together. We'll have to see what happens there. Kira and Scott. Um, is K Scott going to listen to Brayden's advice and go after Kira? I think he will, um, because that's really what uh, Brayden was trying to say to him. Um, Kate Argent, what else is she going to try to do? Are we going to see Arya again? I'm pretty sure that was like a one-episode thing. But overall, I love this premiere. Fantastic premiere. Um, really looking forward to um, the next episode. That's my review. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be my review for tonight's episode of Pretty Little, uh, which will either be, which, no, it's going to be my review for another classic mirror review, and, and also tonight's episode of Pretty Little R, so see you guys for that. Okay, bye.